I am not a prophet. I am not. I know that is not my calling. I am a pastor and a teacher. But as I read the Scriptures, and as I look at our nation, whom I love, I consider myself a patriot for this nation. I didn't always. I mean, back in the 60s, I did not want to serve my country in the military. Today I'm different. I'm, I am a patriot for this nation. And I feel strongly that this nation has been blessed by God. Study history. Study history and look at this nation and what, how it has developed and what has happened in the last several hundred years in this nation and compare it to any other nation in the history of civilization, Western, Eastern, anywhere. And it, it, it's phenomenal. Israel was at a crossroads when Jeremiah spoke to them. I believe that our nation is, as a, is at a crossroads. I believe that with my whole heart. And when I look at what Jeremiah points to when he says, okay, I have these two illustrations. God could reshape, could reform, but you would not. And so now God will take that hardened nation and break it and destroy it. And he basically says two things the burning incense to other gods and filling this place with the blood of innocence. This nation, as a nation, we have done both of these. We have run after other gods so that just even within the two generations between the time I was a child to now... I. I am now fulfilling the role of a grandfather. And in those two generations, I've seen a drastic change in this nation from a turn of maybe not fully accepting all of God, but recognizing and honoring God and Christian values and principles being active in people's lives, even if they weren't quote-unquote religious It's gone from a nation that separated one day of the week apart from the rest as a nation and then just as individual states and now not at all. So that you make choices to come here on Sunday morning like, okay, well, uh, will my kids play soccer or will I take them to church? Will we play baseball or football or go to church? Will they be in the school play or will we go to church? And that I'm, I, I, I'm not saying that's not an, an, that that's an easy decision to make. And on the other hand, that's an easy decision to make. We have become a nation that is turning away from the Lord God Almighty. And if it were a nation that had only heard slightly of the gospel, if it were a nation that were in the Middle East with different religious traditions, and so from the beginning Christianity were a minority of thought and understanding, that would be something different. But that's not the history of this nation. But instead was based upon Christian principles and was based and led by Christian men, not perfect people, but Christian men being taught by their pastors that inspired them. Read the history. That inspired them coming out of messages from pulpits to do the things that became this company, this country in the Declaration of Independence. It's a fascinating study to read the sermons that you can find from the preachers in New England and all along the eastern seaboard in the 20 years before the Declaration of Independence was 
authored and signed. Very fascinating. The principles and the philosophy and the understanding that led to the Declaration of Independence, a large portion of it came from the pulpit, from men inspired by God to speak the truth. And it resulted in action that led to this great nation. And now this nation is consciously as a nation turning from that. I don't even want to say what the number of innocents that are dead in this country since Roe versus Wade. Because every time I say it, and I exaggerate it because I know it's bigger than the last time I knew of it, I'm, I'm, I'm too low. In the tens of millions. Tens. Many multiples of tens of millions. This is wrong. This is wrong. And I know that because I know the majority of people sitting here, you agree with me that it's wrong. But I'm talking about the accountability of our nation. I'm not talking as a Republican. I'm not talking as a Democrat or an Independent. I'm not talking about a political agenda. I'm talking about the spirit of of God in this nation and the accountability that this nation has as one nation under God. We need to pray for our nation. We need to participate in the political activity of our nation. God bless every one of you who for whatever reason you did, it may have been patriotic, it may have been, oh, I just I got drafted. I didn't whatever it is that you fulfilled your duty to this nation. God bless you for that. But everyone who is a citizen of this nation has a responsibility to this nation. You make a choice as to whether you are a citizen of this nation. And you are protected and cared for in many, many ways, some of which you don't even know of by this nation. And the greatest accountability that we have as Christians in this time and place, in this nation, is to pray for this nation. To participate as much as God calls you to participate in the activities of this nation as a nation to bring Christian principles into this nation. But don't walk out of here hearing the Pastor Kevin wants you to join this Christian group to, you know, this political party or anything else. Because you know what? This nation will not change by political directive, by national, statewide, citywide, countywide, municipality election. That will not change this nation. What will change this nation is the power of Jesus Christ in the lives of its people. And the, that cannot come by political decree. That cannot come by Pastor Kevin teaching on Sunday mornings in this room. That can only come by everyone who calls themselves a Christian spreading the Word of God and drawing others, declaring Him and directing them. That's what evangelism is. It's declaring who God is and directing others toward Him. And that's what I'm challenging you to.